Well, as you know, I've gotten hate mail over the years, um, and I wanted to do justice to it, so I asked Jennifer Childs, co-founder of 1812 Productions, if she would do a dramatic reading of some of the best of my hate mail. But Jennifer, being Jennifer, and she has been a guest on Radio Times countless times talking about theater and comedy, so she's created a piece of theater, and joining her on stage is Dave Jadico and Emily Climo. Marty Moskowain's hate mail. A dramatic reading in one act. <laughs> Greetings, Marty Moskowain. Today I heard you use impacts as a verb. I've never heard you use it before. I hope you never use it again. <laughs> Please use effects instead. Thank you. Best regards. I have a regular listener who thinks Marty is just great. Which is why I want her to know that the plural of thesis is theses. Not either of the two words she just made up just now. <laughs> Marty, when you thank someone for being there and they say thank you in response, you don't have to say you're welcome. <laughs> I love your program. But you have one little speech error that really annoys me. You leave the L out of Pennsylvania. Marty, please pronounce the L in Pennsylvania. It certainly would be nice if you pronounce the state you live in properly. Pennsylvania has an L in the spelling. You say Pennsylvania. You pronounce it like Pennsylvania. You pronounce it like Pensacola. You should pronounce it like Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. <laughs> it is unbecoming to you as an intelligent person. It sounds ignorant, provincial, and not in a good folksy way. Oddly enough, Governor Rendell has the same defect. <laughs> Rendell does this too. For him, is he trying to get votes for sounding folksy? You and Governor Rendell should be ashamed that neither one of you can pronounce correctly the state in which you live. Pennsylvania! <laughs> you know, I've heard you mispronounce many words, but the ones that come to mind at the moment are the following. The noun house is pronounced house. House. And the plural, houses, is pronounced... Houses. Houses. <laughs> Horrifyingly, one has started to hear... House is, or even... House is. <laughs> over the air. The verb to house in its several forms should always be pronounced... House. House. <laughs> but, 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 please, Marty, stop using the word but so much. It feels disrespectful to the guest and to the listener. Listen to your own show and count the number of times that you use the word but during an interview. I, I, I counted at least 119 kind of and sort of expressions, which easily shattered Marty's previous record of 68. So, so years ago. A person on the radio has the obligation not to spread bad grammar, yet Ms. Moscowain invariably uses the hypercorrective feel badly when she should say feel bad. Feel badly would be said of a person with injured fingers. Would she say, I feel wildly, or I feel wild? At one time, feel badly was said by only by dumb people trying to sound smart. But that was about 35 years ago. Now it has spread to even people who aren't dumb. Uh, please try to control your distracting stammer. There must be a speech therapist who can help you. Perhaps WHYY or NPR, or is it PRI? would like me to deliver a lecture or two on stammering and proper Eastern Seaboard pronunciations. You are too respected of a veteran broadcaster to permit yourself the sloppiness of projecting continual, audible 
lip smacking <laughs> into your speech as though such amateurish labial practices were part of sound broadcasting technique. The method to rid yourself of lip smacking is simple. Having your lips slightly parted before beginning speech and having enough moisture on your lips to minimize any sort of audible smacking, breaking labial suction easily eliminate this issue. Blasting such jarring, dissonant pop marks like that lip smacking into a microphone is horrendously disrespectful toward the quality of product you deliver. It is a significant consternation that you allow such admittedly disgusting sounds to escape your lips. I would hope that greater pride would be taken than to directly subject listeners to that. Lip smack. <laughs> Your station is really pushing the envelope. When you encourage and or permit the kind of garbage that we heard on the Marty Moscowane program today, we can only assume that there are no broadcasting standards and practices left for the decent people who listen to WHYY. Marty, for years I gave you the benefit of the doubt on fairness. I assumed, as a privileged yuppie of the 60s, you were blinded by your upbringing and background. But by now, I would expect you, if you wanted, would at least understand there is another opinion and respect those that hold them to at least an effort to fairness. You haven't. You remain a privileged, middle-class ideologue who is isolated from reality. <laughs> Eating on air and being rude all the time? Listen to other hosts. It's so hard to listen to you because you are a crazy micromanager and raise anxiety. Mellow out a little, please. <laughs> Use her a liar extraordinaire. All your validity, you spout. Vomit. Wish I had compassion for you. Just view you as a total sellout pretending to curb. You are the part of the problem in America, Marty Moscowane. That's why I think of you as mommy most inane. <laughs> Get Marty Moscowane off the air. She has no talents. <laughs> NPR's coverage of the Virginia fiasco has motivated me to become a member of the KKK. Whereas previously, I have never had such an inclination or desire. Marty Moscowane is really a man, isn't he? He sounds like a man, and he looks like one too. I've long been troubled by your shabby treatment of guests who don't appear at the top of the show and are forced to wait in the wings. That doesn't seem very NPR-like to make them stand there, sometimes for up to a half an hour. I mean, would it be so hard to provide a proper green room and even, God forbid, a snack? <laughs> I usually love your program, but did not want to hear about fungus, bats, and other disgusting things, not the bats themselves, at 11 at night. Maybe you could avoid unpleasant things for your 11 p.m. rebroadcast. <laughs> I'm listening in bed, and I'm sure some others are, too. What happened to the days when you had wonderful authors? You are so good at what you do. I really enjoy your show. Moreover, you are so beautiful. I saw you online during the pledge support at 3.30 p.m. on Monday, October 21st, 2002. <laughs> You look so cute. I love your hairstyle, too. I guess I were, wish I, you were single because I would love to ask you out. Unless you want to hook up with someone like yourself. <laughs> Ew. Marty. 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 I love your program, but... I'm a regular listener, but... I usually love your program, but... But, but, but... What happened? Would it be so hard? Impact. Houses. VCs. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. <laughs> 